Hi, good evening. We'd like to get started, if we can, if we, if we can please. Welcome. I'm Sally Magnin. I direct the Language Institute, and the Language Institute is the host for this event tonight. So we're really pleased that you came to listen to our speakers and hear about languages and medicine. I see you've all gotten some pizza. That's, that's great. We hope you can enjoy that as kind of an intellectual study break this evening. Um, let me introduce first a Wendy Johnson, who's in the Outreach Coordinator at the Language Institute, and she will introduce our speakers and explain the format of the event. Wendy. Great. Um, I'm really thrilled to be um, hosting this uh, talk on uh, how languages are valuable to those who anticipate a medical uh, profession. Um, I'll tell you uh, a little bit about both of our speakers for tonight. Um, and then we'll have both of the speakers um, do their presentations, and at the end, um, we'll open the floor up for questions. Um, so uh, our first speaker is Jihad Al-Gharabli, Al Al um, and I'm really thrilled to have him. Uh, Jihad and I became acquainted when he was a sophomore, undergraduate, uh, and he came to the Language Institute uh, looking for volunteer opportunities that would enable him to share his beliefs about the value of learning foreign languages and having international experiences, which he felt strongly about. Jihad received his um, Bachelor's of Science in Zoology and in French in May of 2010, and now is in his first year of medical school at the UW-Madison uh, School of Medicine and Public Health. I've asked him to share his insights into the medical school application process, since he is so recently uh, coming from it, and how having a language or multiple languages might help a person stand out in that process. Um, Jihad speaks Arabic and French, and also a little bit of Spanish, a little bit of Hebrew. Um, and then our second speaker, Elizabeth Longmire, grew up in Madison and attended UW-Madison, where she studied both French and Spanish. And I'm sorry, Beth, I didn't even ask, what did you major in? Molecular biology. Molecular biology. <laughs> and during her time in medical school, she used both French and Spanish with patients and spent a summer doing uh, research in France. After graduation, she moved to Texas for residency and uses Spanish daily with patients. And she'll also speak um, about her experiences working in Costa Rica this summer and also about how um, there's a need for uh, people who speak lots of other languages uh, at, her, uh, at the hospital where you've worked at, right? So um, let's start first with Jihad, and uh, so please help me welcome him. There you go. Uh, can everyone hear me? Or it's on. Yep. Is that in the back? Okay, thank you. Uh, good evening, everyone, or good night, uh, depending on, uh, I think it's early, but it's really dark. It's been dark for a couple of hours now, and that's Wisconsin. Uh, I just want to say a couple of words about myself. This is, uh, this is a little bit more official than what I thought it was going to be. But anyway, I, uh, I prepared a few thoughts that I'd like to share with you in regards to the importance of foreign languages and the study of medicine. And I understand that a lot of you are pre-meds or people who are both interested in languages and in, uh, in the study of medicine and the medical sciences, you know, public health and other things. It doesn't have to be an MD degree. I want to start by just sharing a little story. When I was 13, I think I was, uh, so I grew up in Gaza, Palestine, and after you finish sixth grade, you have, that's called primary school, and then you have prep school for three years, seventh and eighth and ninth, so I was supposed to go to a new uh, prep school for the seventh grade, and then, uh, so my parents wanted me to go to school in a different neighborhood, which was still a public school, and it turns out that, the, which I didn't know that at the time, but there was French in that school. The French embassy or the French consulate had a little French program that they were setting up. It's called the French Cultural Center, Centre Culturel Français. So, of course, I didn't like school. I didn't like to study. Still don't like to study. And, you know, my parents wanted me to really learn French. And I said, it's not required. Why should I sign up for it? And after a couple of weeks, my parents actually forced me to. And um, it took me a whole semester to actually start studying for it. I didn't want to. And finally, you know, I don't know how many years after, I think it's about 10 years after I'm here. I just graduated from the University of Wisconsin-Madison, which is an internationally renowned uh, school. I have a degree in French. 
and I'm, uh, I'm getting a degree, I'm getting an MD degree, and I could assure you that the prospect in the future for work for me is going to involve something with French and, uh, and, and the French-speaking countries, either in Europe or in Africa or in the Middle East. So th the point of the story is that perhaps, you know, uh, at some point that you don't, you, you, don't, you don't think you have time or you don't have the interest or you're worried about how your accent is going to sound or this or that, but think in the long term, uh, it really makes a great impression, uh, which at, at the time I didn't know. I didn't care when I was in seventh grade. It really makes a great impression that you do speak a foreign language, and it really opens your mind up, both on the linguistic level and on the social level and the academic level. It makes you just smarter in terms of how you think. Uh, for instance, if you speak a foreign language, it's a lot easier for you to understand people with foreign accents who speak in English. It's just your, uh, you know, we're not going to get into this, but the psycholinguistics uh, field is very complicated and there's a lot of evidence that says that the more languages you learn, the broader your mind uh, kind of gets in what it perceives as language as, you know, and, you know, the, the <coughs> for instance, if you learn more languages, then it's easier for you to learn another language, etc., etc., which could be kind of intuitive. So, um, starting with that story, I, uh, I want to uh, talk a little bit about how I learned English in Palestine. Uh, it was a British colony or protectorate, whatever you call it, for a few years. And so English is required there. And again, we start from fifth grade, and I really didn't care. It was just another subject that you have to learn in school. And, you know, I, I liked learning, but I didn't really like school and studying. All of a sudden, in 10th grade, there's this scholarship where my friends are telling me there's a scholarship where you could go to the U.S. And that sounded really interesting, right? You're a kid in Gaza, which, you know, you don't leave very much. And there's this opportunity to leave for free, right? To go to the U.S., America, which it was just beyond your imagination as a, as a student in 10th grade. So I applied. And uh, at that point, I was actually really um, getting into the French program, not so much interested in English because it was just another subject to school. So I applied, and you know, there was a long selection process. Surprisingly, I actually ended up one of eight people who got selected from Gaza to go on that scholarship. And it was a very uh, life-changing experience, I would say. It's called the YES program. Uh, we came to the US. We, I spent a year in North Carolina in high school. My English uh, got much better. And it just from that point on, I would say that just my whole perspective on education, on work, on the future, on what I want to do later is just completely changed. You know, uh, an average Palestinian student, even a smart one, in Gaza is probably wishing, okay, I'll, uh, <coughs> I'll finish up, I'll get a degree, work for a couple of years, and then get married. Okay? It's just a very uh, local, uh, locally driven perspective, if you would, about the future. Now, it, things look very different for me. Uh, I want to get an MD degree after that. I want to get uh, training, hopefully, in surgery, uh, which in the Middle East is not, there's not a lot of people uh, that have good training in surgery, especially in Palestine. And with my Arabic, with my French, I, I want to be able to travel around, work for NGOs that have a focus on, on medical uh, services and medical education. And it's just really amazing how, um, you don't have to have a degree. You don't have to have anything. It's just the, the, the more you learn, I think the easier it becomes for you to interact with other people. And that's how language opens up uh, many, many doors for you. And from this perspective, I'm speaking about you giving to the community. That is, when you do have a degree, and suppose you speak Spanish, or you speak English, or you speak German, or this or that, I'm speaking about you going out to help in that community. But the benefit that you yourself get uh, from learning a foreign language is really immense. I, I would say is a lot, uh, a lot more critical to your personal development, to your cognitive development, uh, to your literature sense, to your sense of art, cuisine even, uh, that, that you have. Because uh, <clears throat> a lot of you might have heard, you know, a language is not just a language, it's a, it's a cultural door. So you know, when, you learn about when you learn French, you're not just learning French, you're learning about a lot of Francophone culture, cuisine, and habits, etc. 